Hi, my name is Joe Calhoun, and I uh, initially moved here in 1967, and in 68 I became very actively involved in the civil rights movement. Primarily, I saw the possibilities of what things could be from having lived other places prior to moving to Memphis. And once I moved here, I was very dismayed at some of the things that I saw. So I became actively involved in the civil rights movement. I was 18 and in my last year of high school at the time and helped make the signs, the I am a man signs. I uh, would leave school on Mondays where we had the Black Mondays. They encouraged uh, high school and college age students to come and help support the marchers downtown. And I did. And, um, that's where I met Ernest Withers during 1968 and 69 in that time period and uh, have been an activist, environmentalist, and human rights activist ever since. Okay, okay. So we wanted to talk about what it means to have a sense of community. Uh, what is it to you to have a sense of community? Actually, a sense of community means everything. Um, unfortunately, we lost it somewhere along the way, and we really need to get back to that time and place where people looked out for each other. You know, if your kids were walking home, your neighbors would watch them and make sure they made it to your house. Uh, we lost that, and it's unfortunate because we really need that. And what's happened is we have people who've come to the United States from other countries and they come with a sense of community with them because they come with a sole purpose of having a better life for themselves and their family. Um, today and in the last you know, 20 or 30 years, the black families have become so disenfranchised that the sense of family, the sense of community has been something that's kind of faded away. So many of the male figures have been removed from the home through incarceration uh, disproportionately and other things. So we have uh, grown up without that sense of family, a sense of community. But we really, really need to get that back to where we care about what our neighborhood looks like, uh, what the neighbors are doing, and uh, we look out for each other. And that's what's missing. Okay, what the people don't see outside of us recording, you are a sharp dressed brother. <laughs> and you I take try. so much pride in how you dress and how you carry yourself. And I feel that is one of the things that is really missing within our community. And could you tell people about growing up in the time of the I am a man size and oh, you absolutely. know how much pride people took in being black people and dressing sharply and how they held their heads up during that time. Could you give a reflection on that time? Oh, absolutely. I mean, one of the first things that I recognized when I moved here um, is I couldn't tell the students from the teachers, some of them, because some of the teachers were young and some of the, the students dressed in suits. So I couldn't tell who was a student who was a teacher. But if you look at some of the pictures that uh, Ernest Withers took during some of the civil rights uh, uh, protests and marches, you'll see men and women dressed to the nines in the hot sun protesting, marching downtown, marching in the uh, march against fear from the Peabody to Jackson, Mississippi. They dressed, they, you know, they looked impeccable and they're out in the hot sun protesting. And so when I look at those pictures, it gives me hope that we can come back to that time and place again. I remember, you know, when you talk about that, I remember my grandmother. Um, she was in her 90s when she passed away. But I remember her, like, if somebody was dressed nice, she'd be like, ooh, they're so clean and they're so sharp. And she, it was just a sense of pride. And I realized from that, that was all our race had back in the day. Is. Right. I mean, you, you have to have something to hold on to. And I remember... Uh, going through uh, driving past a project and you see grandmothers and out there with their little flowers in the front yard and you know making sure that their front porch was always clean and neat yeah. and they lived in the project and project has nothing to do with the people it's about your circumstance mm -hmm. and that's what's important is we have to change our circumstance and a lot of that comes with looking at what we can do to plan for our future, for our children's future, financial literacy, 
um, is a big thing that we can all look at and try to, you know, rearrange what we feel as right by what we've been used to doing. And we have to do things differently. We can't, you know, they always say, if you keep doing the same thing, you're going to get the same result. So you have to change some of the things that we do in order to get a better result. Um, and saving, making preparations for your future is all critical to being able to leave something for your family, to have generational wealth within your family. You have to start somewhere, and there's no place better than start with ourselves. Okay. Where, where do you feel the disconnect came? Because you said we were a people of pride and community. What changed? Oh, a, lo a lot of things changed. One of the most critical things that changed was the infiltration of drugs, the war against drugs. Those destroyed our communities. And so we need to try to get back to that time where people were feeling comfortable. Little old ladies are afraid to step outside the door. They're afraid to walk down the street. They're afraid to go to the uh, gas at night or go to the grocery store at night. We need to get to a point where people are comfortable with wherever they live and are free to walk the streets you know, in the afternoon and early evening and uh, have that sense of community. Um, there are a lot of things that we can do to bring that back, uh, but it starts in the home. It starts with each parent, each brother, each sister, uh, aunt, uncles, you know, just talking together, praying together, uh, creating that sense of community where you eat dinner together and you carry on a conversation about what's going on in each other's lives and you decide how you can help each other. Um, it's, a, it, it's kind of disheartening sometimes you see immigrants come over and they do so much better than people that have been here, but they have a, a reason, they have a drive, there's something that's you know, making them determined to succeed and be successful because they have a purpose. We have to develop a purpose and that purpose has to do with looking at what we can what, what our talents are and our skills are and perfecting those so that we're not having to work for other people and we can work for ourselves and our friends and family need to help support that and it's 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 one thing to have a business and people uh, that you know support you and other people are coming and support you but oftentimes you know we have a friend or family that has a business and we want the hookup you know <laughs> and and that sounds fine except they're struggling Absolutely. they need you to support them financially and bring your friends and family with them to support someone's business so you know we have a long way to go but I'm very very hopeful that we can get there yes. And as I look around, because we are taping at the Withers Museum, as I look around, I see heritage, I see history. Uh, would you say that a lot of people that are disconnected don't necessarily know their history? Absolutely. I mean, you have to understand from whence you came so that you have a vision of where you want and need to go. Um, but if you don't have that, you're just kind of floundering out there without a parachute. And so we have to develop that sense of community and, and a lot of it, all of it has to start in the home. Uh, we have to be responsible for what we walk out of the door in our heads and in our, in our hearts and that comes from the home. We can't expect other people to teach our children things that we haven't taught them at home. Mm -hmm. And also I've noticed as well in a social media era, a lot of things are being depicted on social media or on TV that may not necessarily be true. What advice would you give to parents trying to instill heritage in their kids in a social media ran era? Um, I think the biggest thing is to be socially aware of what is going on in the, in the country, in the city in which you live. There are so many, many positive things that are going on in the city we have the largest number of black female entrepreneurs in this city than we have ever had before. Um, we have a large number of black male entrepreneurs who are emerging every day. 
we have a large number of black male teachers who are doing excellent work. And I say black male teachers, uh, we've always had female teachers, but there's always been a shortage of black male teachers. And some of the black male teachers are some of the greatest role models that the children have that they can see, feel, and touch. I mean, it's one thing for them to uh, look at uh, basketball players, entertainers, athletes as role models, but it's really important for them to look at people that they can see, feel, and touch and talk to on a daily, weekly basis. So you have school teachers, you have uh, attorneys, you have uh, legislators that live in the city that people can look to and talk to. You have people in the church that people can look to and talk to. Those are some of the role models that they need to uh, look at because they can see, feel, and touch them, ask them questions, learn from them, emulate them, and uh, not somebody that's on the TV that they'll never actually have a conversation with. Uh, big brothers, big sisters in their household can be role models, but the home is a starting place for anything that's gonna change in the community. And we have to take that uh, accountability and that responsibility. We all hear about the murders that happen, but we don't hear about all the history making things that happen on a daily basis. Um, you know, we know about the um, uh, vote on Kanji Brown uh, um, for the Supreme Court justice, but there were other firsts that happened on that same day throughout the country yeah. in the black community. And we uh, need to be in tune to those things and sometimes we have to change our social media outlets that we look at and uh, get our news from but um, there's the black news channel there's black enterprise magazine there's other things and they will give you an out um, a different point of view of where we are in this country and there's a so many hopeful things. We have so many students that are attending uh, HBCUs that uh, fortunately through the negative publicity it's created a lot more funding from uh, white institutions and the government for HBCUs. Uh, we had all the uh, bomb threats that occurred a few months ago uh, that were uh, against HBCUs, well, they created a funding source that will help to preserve and safeguard the HBCUs. So they're a big melting pot of wow. uh, educated brothers and sisters for life. Mm -hmm. And they are dedicated to helping each other. Mm -hmm. And so we have a commission that is specifically dedicated under the Biden administration to foster the development and the further preservation of HBCUs. Wow. Shout out to Tennessee State University, <laughs> my HBCU, which La I graduated from. Lemoyne Owen, <laughs> Lane College, Morehouse, Howard, Clark, all of those are great institutions yes. Yes. that have educated so many of our people that we look up to, Martin Luther King, uh, Camilla Harris, uh, many, many more have graduated from HBCUs. From this talk with Joe, I've gathered we have to be intentionally prideful. We cannot be ashamed to be proud. We cannot be ashamed to be happy. I feel a lot of us are afraid to even smack, like, because our community, we're tied to just well, we and you know, it the, okay. you, my day okay. We you don't walk past life. somebody, speak. Yes. It doesn't cost a thing it doesn't. to speak to your brothers and sisters. Um, we have an obligation. And like you said, I like the word intentional. Mm -hmm. We have to be intentional by, about creating a difference, creating a safe space for our kids to grow up in. Mm -hmm. And intentional is the best word that I can come up with. Uh, done on purpose. We got to do it has to be by design. Yes. It can't just be by chance. So mm -hmm. I'm super thankful for this conversation. Is there anything else you would like to leave the audience with? Yes. Simply, we need to reevaluate the penal system so that we can bring our brothers, our sisters, our fathers, our cousins, our aunts and our uncles home get their records expunged so that they can 
earn their rightly place in the family and their right to vote. There you have it, you guys. You guys have an amazing day on Dear Shamika the Podcast. We'll see you guys soon.